one of the ways that we exploit the Earth's crust is dramatically is to uh, extract a kind of fuel that we call fossil fuels. Now, even though fossil fuels, otherwise known as black gold, has just revolutionized, revolutionized how we live and how the and how comfortable our lives are, especially in uh, modern industrial areas of this planet, it does have its repercussions. Now, what are fossil fuels? Well, fossil fuels are basically made of any organic matter that has decomposed, decayed, and has been um, underground, undergo, gone uh, an intensive pressurized process to make into these organic substances. And uh, when people extract fossil fuels, there are basically three types of fossil fuels that they can extract. First is the, um, the oil layer, right? The oil layer where uh, it's comprised of many types of different organic compounds. Um, we'll discuss in how we purify the oil layer. Uh, when we talk about organic chemistry, uh, this oil layer uh, is what we use to, after refining it, we use it to make petrol. And we also take some of that oil layer to make plastics and to make our roads. So that oil layer is really, really important. Uh, another type, on top of where you can find oil, you usually can also find a top layer of gas. These gas are known as natural gas. Now, uh, the gas are basically light and they are in the form of gas and we can use it to burn them. Like, you know, our gas tank that we have at home, when we turn on the stove, click, click, gas comes out light a match boom your stove is now uh, lit where you have a combustion reaction between the natural gas usually propane and oxygen all right so fossil fuels is quite amazing now the contribution of plastics uh, in our for for human civilization is phenomenal. We use plastics for toys, water bottles, for making stuff like container stuff, like for caps for this. Uh, our cars not only run on fossil fuels, it's also made of fossil fuels. The plastic, the cockpit, the fiberglass things, they're all these things. Well, fiberglass isn't really fossil fuel, it's just glass into fibers. But uh, the plastic parts of the cars uh, all made of fossil fuels. It's amazing. But it does have its repercussions. Every time we use fossil fuels, we release all this carbon dioxide and all this volatile organic compounds or chemicals into, back into our planet. And this has repercussions. It is um, it either causes global climate change in terms of warming up our planet in some parts of our world. It also introduces toxicity into our food system, it's like into the rivers and oceans, into our soil. So it has massive implications and to to the health, overall health of this planet. So people start to ponder alternative sources of fuels because we still want to live comfortably. We still want to power our rooms, use our iPhones and stuff like that. So what are alternative sources? Well, we can use renewable energy like solar power. That's a lot of power in the sun. Uh, wind energy, all caused by the sun. Geothermal energy, which is the energy, the heat from the Earth's core and mantle that we can extract and use that heat 
to power uh, to power our lives. Um, wave or tidal energy, that's the stuff, you know, the tides that go up and down, we can extract that motion to produce electricity. Um, yeah, wind energy, yeah, I mentioned that. Wave energy, yes, I mentioned that. And, and biomass energy, well, that's not really favorable because you'd be clearing up a lot of land just to grow some stuff and then burn them. Uh, all right, so there's a lot of types of fuels that we can use. And a fuel that we might be particularly interested in is uh, the hydrogen fuel. And the hydrogen fuel is basically taking hydrogen, mixing with oxygen, boom, you get water, okay? So mm, people have been talking about the hydrogen economy and how we can exploit um, the non-toxicity effect of hy using hydrogen. Um, in the Mainly, we're going to describe the process of using hydrogen in cars, all right? So here I have a very simple schematic of a fuel cell, very, very simple. And basically, a fuel cell is comprised of three components. You have the negative electrode, which is a piece of metallic uh, thing or an inert thing like carbon. Um, an electrolyte, which is kind of like a gooey paste of um, elements or compounds in there that helps promote the uh, exchange, which helps promote the uh, movement of ions, and a positive electrode on the other side that again is made of the same material as the negative electrode. Now, this concept is can be quite confusing and quite difficult to understand right now but let us try to do this so what we have is that we have hydrogen being introduced into this fuel cell all right when the hydrogen touches the um, negative electrode when you have a negative electrode what's going to happen is that the, the element, the molecule of hydrogen breaks up, and when it breaks up, it, the electrons will travel up the electrode into a cable system or a wire system, all right, into the engine, and the engine is not allowed to do work, okay? And this is producing electricity, okay? So um, when that happens, uh, electricity is made to do work and as this is happening, if, as electricity is traveling almost towards the engine, the uh, mem there's a very thin, poro there was a porous membrane, a porous membrane. Membrane are things that allow some things to go through and other things not to go through. So if you have the hydrogen being broken up into hydrogen ions, all right, these hydrogen ions are small much smaller than the two hydrogens together, these hydrogen ions can pass through the membrane via the electrolyte to the other side. If you have unreacted uh, hydrogen gas, it cannot go through the membrane and so it goes out. All right? Okay. Now, as the electrons have done work and it's coming down here, and at the same time, hydrogen ions are now coming towards a getting in contact with the positive electrode, oxygen is being introduced at the at this very other end. Now, when the two meet up together, as well as the electrons that has come down from after it has done its work, a chemical reaction will occur whereby the hydrogen ions with the oxygen gas and the electrons form water, all right, or steam in this case. The, of course, the oxygen gas will have to split up for the two hydrogen ions to combine to it to make water, okay? So, the process is, can be quite complicated, but what we need to know is relatively simple things. We need to know that 
the hydrogen and oxygen are combined to make water, in most specifically steam. Okay? The chemical equation involves two units or moles, units of hydrogen gas, combining with one unit of oxygen gas, or one mole of oxygen gas, to give us two units or two moles of water. Alright? So, there you go.